Erica, describe for me the carpentry course underway here right now. The carpentry course that we have going on here right now is um, we have 20 youth within the community that are participating in uh, training to employment through carpentry and roofing. Chief Perley, what are your thoughts on having a carpentry course here on uh, Tobik First Nation? Um, for us, it's, it's important to build a skilled workforce. Um, a lot of our carpenters are aging out of the industry and they, they need to be replaced. Um, so the carpentry course is designed to get new faces into the workforce um, and have, try and get them to take it seriously so they can have careers. Part two, be aware of who's around you. Be safe, make sure of that. What will the students learn during the 16 week course? During the 16 week course, they're gonna learn the basic um, carpentry, how to run tools, WMIS, um, how to do measuring, how to erect a home, how to um, do roofing. Currently, what is the job situation like right now at Tobik? And also, what is the need for trades workers here? Here we have, um, of course, a lot of need here in the community because we're building homes continuously. Basically, we're, we're trying to fill the need within the community to um, give people homes because a lot of the homes here are overcrowded. So we're working with CMHC to build homes to fill the void within the community of overcrowding housing. And we are also, one of the major needs we have here is for repairs for the current homes that we have here. So within this course, they'll be able to do minor repairs within the community and they'll also be able to work with the aging population that is coming out of, that are retiring to build the homes here in the community. So what is C? That's where a wall's going. That is where, uh, yeah, a uh, load bearing wall may be. Who can tell me what D is? Foundation walls. What are you liking with the actual course here? What, what am I liking with the actual course? Yeah. Um, well, the teacher is a great teacher. He, uh, he explains stuff that I need to know. Um, you know, I'm gonna learn more because we just started, but once we get the hands on and actually starting to build the structures and stuff, with his help, you know, it's gonna help me out a lot in the long run. You've been in this course now for two weeks, so, mm -hmm. so far, what have you learned? I've actually learned a lot of terminology that I never learned uh, on the work site, because there's a lot of discussion in class that you won't talk about unless you're in class, so it's really nice to learn a lot of terminology and all the words and stuff. I am really enjoying it. It's a, a new learning experience for me anyways, getting all those new skill sets. Tell me about your experiences with the carpentry course as well as your previous experience in electrical. Well, um, yeah, I went to school for electrical um, trade uh, back in 2023. It was really like, compared to like my high school years, I always had trouble like learning like just like what they would teach you, science, math, English, and all that stuff. And like when I work hands on, like I feel like it's much easier to like stick in my mind. Oh, I'm doing a lot, it's not, it's pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, starting to learn how to use a tape measure and all kinds of sorts of things like saws, hand saws, and learn a lot to do measurements. It's pretty good. It's been good. Um, it's been very hands on. Um, it's technical, but it's okay, you know. Um, I love that. Uh, Joe is an amazing instructor. But not, on, not only Joe, but we have our peers. We, we help each other, you know what I mean? Like it's, like they say, uh, one band, one rhythm, one march. That's how we are. Vicki, you've been in the carpentry course now for a couple of weeks. Tell me what you've learned so far and if you're enjoying the course. I've learned a lot of math, a lot of math. And uh, yes, I'm enjoying it a lot. Jonathan, tell me about your experiences in the carpentry program. Uh, it's very well explained, and um, like if uh, somebody's behind, we ask each other and help each other out. Can anybody tell me which is E? Letter E. Floor joists. Yes, sir. 
Erica, who are some of the other partners involved in the carpentry program here? Some of the partners that we're working with include Joint Economic Development Initiative, JEDI for short. They're the major sponsors of this program. In partnership with Guaranteed Tech Academy, GTA. Tom, tell me about your role here at Tobik First Nation with your company, Guaranteed Tech Academy. Uh, so we're putting on a carpentry course here in Tobik First Nations. We've got 18 students and uh, it's a, a pre-apprenticeship program. Um, so afterwards, if they go out into the workforce and they get enough practical hours, they'll be able to write their first block exam. What are some of the actual fundamental skills that your course will be teaching the students? Uh, it's big on us uh, to do real world hands-on training. So you know they're going to have hands-on, most, most days they'll get to touch actual tools and materials and be cutting and sawing and hammering and doing all that kind of stuff that they'll be doing in the, in the real world. Workplace safety, is that also going to be one of the fundamentals? Absolutely, yeah. Safety, we start out with safety training, get that out of the way for sure. Have your protective personal equipment on at all times. How important is that in skilled trades? Uh, it's very important. I mean, you, accidents are, are a big concern, so we want to mitigate that as much as possible. Tell me a little bit more about your company and your role and your impact around the province and teaching courses that, you're, that are underway. So I started out as a mechanical contractor. I had a business in Fredericton for 20 years and uh, we saw the need and the lack of skilled workers in the trade. So we decided, decided to start our own private trade school so that we can get people trained the way that employers want them to be, which, is, which would involve a lot of hands-on training more so than any, anything at all. The program has been underway here at Tobik First Nation for a couple of weeks now. Between yourself and your instructors, what are you seeing here with the students? How are they learning? How are they adapting well to the program? Yeah, we see uh, they really, they're really they really engaged, especially with, with the hands-on now. Now that we've been a couple of weeks, you know, we've got that safety out of the way, you know, and now they're starting to actually get their hands-on tools. They're really starting to be more engaged in the program. How many instructors do you have here working in Tobik First Nation right now? Uh, so we've got a Red Seal Carpentry instructor, uh, Joe Banal. There are times when you could bump somebody in the head with this. You, you're going to feel awful about that. So let's pre be preventative on that whole thing. So Mr. Brunell, tell me about uh, your role here as a carpentry instructor. My role is to, to introduce these guys to carpentry, ba the basics on the trade, how to use the tools, the basic hand tools, safely, to properly use them and find out the different ways to use those particular tools. Some tools may be required to only do one thing. Some may have other things that they could use it for. So that basically is at the point of what I'm instructing them now in the shop. The rest is just framing to get these, there, there are some saws. units coming up in the future, just getting them ready for that, that, that part segment in their learning process. Of course, our band, uh, Toby Capital. Kelly, tell me about the importance of having a carpentry course underway here at Tobik First Nation. Well, it's important for to keep our capacity going uh, here in Tobik because we have a, oh, we got a, a, a plan for the next five years of building houses, but we're always um, falling short on the capacity side for, say, repairs or, and so forth. So we need to uh, keep, uh, keep the capacity going. We got guys retiring. We are, our, uh, our guys now are getting a little bit older, so we need to make sure that we have the young guys uh, coming up. And also us as the training providers, also Tobik Employment and Training and Skilled Trades NB. Wade, can you describe for me the carpentry course that's underway here at uh, Tobik First Nation? Yeah, so right now we have a carpentry program running in uh, Tobik First Nations. Uh, we've run them across the province and, and it's, uh, it's to give the uh, individuals from the community some uh, basic skills in the carpentry trade so that we can hopefully put them to work uh, within the community, building homes, uh, working towards their apprenticeship with uh, skilled trades in New Brunswick in the future. Wade, describe for me how long the program is and what are some of the specific skills they will learn? The, the, the program is running for 16 weeks, so it's a little more condensed uh, a version of, uh, of a program we usually run. 
uh, but they're going to learn the basic skills, you know, reading and measuring tape, uh, job skills, safety is a big por portion of what we're going to do here. We want them to be, to be able to go to the job site and work safely. But basically, it's just basic skills to get them employable so they can go direct entry route into apprenticeship and start their career. So what is the process if a First Nation student from Tobique wants to get into the carpentry program? What is the process before they start? Well, there, there's the biggest process we're using with the First Nation communities is we want to do direct entry route into apprenticeship. So where they'll actually be working with a mentor uh, contractor within the community and they'll enter directly into apprenticeship where it's kind of backwards. So, so they'll work for a year gaining experience, skills in the trade, and then we'll send them to school for a shorter period of time, so usually six to eight weeks. Uh, so it's kind of a learn on the job site and then go to school after. So it kind of makes site. more sense for, for the student when they go to school. Well, How important is it to motivate right young people the, today to get into skilled trades? Oh, I think today we need to motivate you know, everybody to get into skilled trades. If, you know, if, it's, if it's your passion. I think the biggest thing is you need to have that passion for that skilled trade. But the days of, you know, of skilled trades people being not well paid are gone. Uh, skilled trades is in high demand right now, all the trades. Uh, and yeah, we need to get more young people into the skilled trades and, and tell them it's a, viable, it's a viable career. Is there much of a need for new housing stock here in Tobik First Nation? There's always a need for housing in Tobik First Nation, yes. Can you elaborate on that in terms of numbers? Uh, I think our housing list is over a hundred. Uh, families, individuals. So the, so the needs are different. It's not one size fits all. And we try to do our best to, to accommodate them. It's always an ongoing battle. Uh, Right now, our five-year agreement with the province and, and uh, along with ISC is we're building 10 homes a year, but we always seem to uh, add a little bit more, maybe 10 to 16 homes per year in the next five years. So um, <clears throat> it's dwindling down. Our biggest problem is um, our homelessness, our single people, our couch surfers, and, and so forth. So. When you have 200 people on the list, I would say it's 200 homes, I guess, when it comes down to it. How important is it to do regular maintenance on the homes at Topic First Nation? Well, as you know, um, home, homes are expensive um, with the, how the prices of materials has gone up and things like that and a lot of people are unable to fix them themselves and so they rely on us to be able to provide the the trained students to come out and be able to do the minor repairs within the homes some things can be as simple as uh, fixing repairing a window uh, replacing a window um, uh, or replacing a door or building a porch or building a picnic table. There's a lot of needs around here um, that people do need and we don't have enough skilled workers to be able to do so. Okay, when we are installing these, this cross bracing, do we nail these in right away? No. No. You save it till the very last part. This is your very last step. Yes, when all the partitions are up, when all the drywall's on, when they're moving the furniture in, stuff like that, okay. What else are you hoping to learn during the course of the program? Uh, learn how to frame trusses and uh, expand my knowledge in the carpentry field. So Samantha, tell me about uh, the carpentry course you're taking and uh, how much you're enjoying it. I love it. I always wanted to learn carpentry and so I could do work myself. As a resident of Tobik First Nation, do you think there's a demand for carpenters? Oh yes, every year there's always buildings being built for people that need homes and we're always expanding every year. So there's high demand for it. <laughs> what are your hopes for uh, after the completion of the carpentry course? Uh, I wouldn't mind like writing my first block and then eventually uh, get my um, red seal. Can anybody read out loud bridging? Bridge in place between the joists from the top of one joist to the bottom of the next, two per, two per joist cavity. Okay, everybody, 
OC. What does OC mean? It means on center. That's right. Bethany, can you tell me what header is? Header, framing member designed to carry a heavy, heavier load, often made of two or more pieces fastened together. I know the program is going to last for a couple of more months, but do you think it was a, a good choice to get into this program? And tell me why. I just recently moved back to my reserve, getting to know everybody on the reserve again. I like it. Do you think it's important to have skilled trades here in Tobik First Nation? Yes, because there's lots of houses going up and elders need help with uh, repairs and I want to be able to help the elders that need help that don't have anybody to help them. Erica, there's a placement program planned for after the, the training. Tell me about the placement program. Once they're done the orientation into carpentry and roofing, they're going to be um, going into a job placement for 12 weeks in partnership with JEDI, Joint Economic Development Initiative, and the Tobik Band, which is Tobik Employment and Training. And they're going to be going into the work placement for 12 weeks. And they are going to be using that opportunity to show what they can do and um, it's going to be like their interview for the 12 weeks and then from there they're going to be able to um, because we don't want nobody to be left without anything that we're actually they can decide whether they're going to go back to school whether they can find another employment opportunity so during the placement will the students get to practice all their skills they will definitely be able to practice all the skills that they've learned and they'll be able to gain new skills by working with different apprentices because as we know everybody has their own techniques and their own ways of doing things um, within the guidelines of course and they'll be able to do to learn more skills with somebody new by a journey person here within the community. In the next couple of months, your carpentry course will come to an end. What are some of the other programs you have planned? Some of the programs that we have planned is to also do a, a young um, trades program where they're gonna be coming in and they're gonna be doing uh, carpentry. They're gonna be building a lamp, so which will, it, with NBC, in partnership with NBCC, they're going to be doing um, electrical by putting the wiring into the lamp. They're going to build the base of the lamp with carp by carpentry skills. And then they're going to build the um, shade for the lamp. So we're also looking at doing a welding camp for youth. So um, where they're going to come in and build... Um, we're not determined on what they're going to build. Last year they built shelves for their homes. Um, we're also going to be doing a landscaping. Um, one of the major things we're trying to do is do a small appliance repair course here in the community and we're looking at doing a heavy equipment course here in the community. The employment and training program that you have here in Tobik First Nation seems to be a pretty efficient. They've got lots of good programs. How important is it to have that here in Tobik First Nation? Uh, it's important, very important because the, our goal is to try and create a local economy, uh, try and build uh, a skilled workforce so that they can do other jobs if they move away from the community um, or get them interested in fields of work where they can go off on their own and start their own business, those types of things. And we're also looking at doing uh, what we're calling Discovery Week. We're, we're going to bring other employment opportunities that may include teaching, um, policing, uh, border patrol, um, uh, travel agent, uh, insurance agent different things like that. There is work everywhere and uh, the thing is they just have to be motivated enough to get whatever they can out of the course and uh, that they can maybe find employment elsewhere. I mean there's 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 jobs all across Canada and the United States I mean where we can work in both countries because being First Nation. In addition to the challenges of finding staff on Tobik First Nation to build new homes and maintenance are there other challenges to build, including cost of materials? Right now, I mean, uh, we're, we're, we're building a new subdivision. 
I mean, uh, those are the biggest challenges is trying to be uh, shovel ready. And uh, yeah, money is always an aspect. I mean, but being shovel ready is, is one of the key factors that we try to thrive on here. And with the five-year plan that we have, we've also been asked by ISC in the future to develop another subdivision. So we, we realize the importance of trying to be ready. We're always trying to be ready. We're always trying to play ball with everybody. We, we see the importance in it. There's no use waiting around. We, we know that uh, people need homes and people need employment. So we try not to wait around and, and uh, we, try to, we try to make sure that we're ready for, for all aspects, whether it's through CMHC, ISC, the province. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're, we're ready to go. What are some of the other functions that Skilled Trades NB will be doing here? Well, we will we, we help support the program uh, from today right till the, the the onset of the completion of the program. But once the program is completed, I'll work with Erica within the community with Jedi. Uh, once the students are actually employed, and we'll register them as an apprentice with with uh, Skilled Trades NB. Um, you know, they get they'll get uh, support when they go to school. They get childcare, so they get supports from us. But also. My role is kind of to be there for if they have any issues or any questions, concerns about their journey through this, this program. Are any of these programs underway right now at any of the First Nations communities in New Brunswick? Um, we you do have some running, um, some just finished up in Kingsclear. So we, we do run them quite a few times a year. So not maybe running right now, but we do continuously run these throughout the year. So Erica, tell me about your solar panel here. Our solar panel here was um, erected last year. We had an introductory to electrical program. So we're the students, um, we had 12 students that came into the project. We finished with 10. So they did an introductory to electrical and with Workforce Warriors was our partner on that. They were the major sponsor that provided the training here. And we also, um, near the last two weeks, we had Smart Energy Company come in and they erected the solar panel. So the purpose of the solar panel was to be able to provide solar power to our power grounds, which are right over here. And it's interesting that the solar panel is located next to the training facility and students who were under some of the programs took part in the build of the solar panel. All the students that were in the electrical program were helped build the solar panels. So they learned everything from um, the clear, fixing the ground to be able to put it in, um, helping find the direction for the solar panel to be optimized the most, and whatnot. So they were right from day one working with Smart Energy Company to be able to do the complete build. A lot of the students that I interviewed today, they seem to have future plans for, for careers and trades. Those are Tom's tools. Um, Those are that's Tom's probably encouraging here. That's definitely encouraging to hear because that's what the community needs. Uh, right now we don't, we don't have the workforce uh, ready to take on the projects that, that, that we're planning. So doing this training program through uh, Tobic Employment and Training is going to uh, help us uh, build their capacity to fill that need. <laughs>